Hello everybody, I am Arjit Rishul from Radio City 91.1. So today we are going to know about Hodgkin lymphoma because this is the awareness webinar and today we have Dr. Malik Arjun Kalashiti with us. So doctor, would you please in, uh, introduce yourself? Hi Trishul, thank you for having me. My name is Dr. Malik Arjun Kalashiti. Uh, I am a head of the Department of Clinical Hematology, Hemato-Oncology, Bone Marrow Transplantation and Cellular Therapy at Manipal Hospital, Old Airport Road, Bangalore. Uh, I deal with blood cancers, bone marrow transplantation and various other blood disorders. Thank you. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much for having me. So today uh, we are going to know about this Hodgkin lymphoma and myth support, everything about Hodgkin lymphoma. Sure. So this is going to be a, a support and positive interview today. Sure. So first of all, I would like to ask, uh, let's begin with the basics. Yeah. So what is this Hodgkin lymphoma yeah. and how is it uh, different from other cancers? Yeah. So Hodgkin's lymphoma is a type of blood cancer, right? First of all, you know, the moment you utter the word cancer, people become anxious. Yeah. Uh, they have a sea of emotions, you know, charging them. And, and it is very difficult to talk to them beyond those emotions. But so largely we divide cancers into blood cancers and solid organ cancers. I'm a hemato-oncologist. I deal with blood cancers. So the moment you say cancer, people have some basic questions. You know, what is the stage? What is the type? Are you going to cure? So uh, when you talk about cancer, solid organ cancers are cancers of lung, liver, breast, prostate, which are, which are treated differently, which are staged differently. Whereas blood cancers, the common types are acute leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma, chronic leukemias. So Hodgkin's lymphoma is a type of lymphoma. We divide lymphomas into two subtypes, the Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. The Hodgkin's one derives its name from a British pathologist uh, named uh, Thomas Hodgkin, who okay. initially described. So he was the one who first described these patients who had lymph node enlargement. And uh, the one of the pathognomonic cell of Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma is Reed Sternberg cell, which derives its name by uh, you know a couple of doctors, Dorothy Reed and Sternberg, right? So Hodgkin's lymphoma is a type of blood cancer classified uh, in the lymphoma category. Uh, the common variant of lymphoma is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. However, Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, is something that can occur in about 10% of patients of blood cancer, has its own distinct pathobiology, distinct uh, classification, distinct symptomatology and treatment. Okay. So how common is this Hodgkin lymphoma, especially in India? Yeah. And who are at the risk? Yeah. So, you know, uh, if you were to take just cancers, the blood cancers themselves account for about 8 to 10% of all cancers. And of the blood cancers, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of the uh, not so common lymphoma because non-Hodgkin's lymphoma accounts for about 80 to 85% and Hodgkin's lymphoma about 10 to 15% of, of uh, the cancers. So uh, it is not very common. However, uh, it is very important to diagnose and distinguish this lymphoma from other types of lymphoma because treatment is very evolved. It is one of the most curable cancer. In fact, amongst cancers, Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of the cancer which is which has the most probability of being cured. And what are the symptoms of this Hodgkin lymphoma? Yeah, yeah, it's a very important question and we have to make sure that our viewers understand this well. So the commonest presentation of lymphoma is lymph node enlargement. We call those nodal lymphomas. So most patients of Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, will have enlargement of the lymph nodes and most commonly in the cervical area, but it can also be in axillary area, inguinal area, abdominal lymph nodes. So lymph node enlargement, which oftentimes is painless, progressive and does not get better after multiple course of antibiotics should raise uh, suspicion. They can also have host of uh, systemic symptoms that we call loss of weight, loss of appetite, drenching night sweats, sometimes pruritus, you know, uh, itching for no rhyme or reason. So anyone who has these symptoms which are persisting uh, must uh, go to the, uh, the physicians or the oncologists so that they are investigated. And the diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma itself is very simple and one can get to the real diagnosis in, 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 in a very rapid point of time. I think one of the most common symptoms amongst all the cancers are unintentional weight loss. True, true. That is true. So, you know, cancer cachexia it was called as. So, unintentional weight loss, uh, fevers which are periodic call it, you know, fevers on and off, on and off without any focus of infection and patients having aches and pains and bone pains, all of these should raise a suspicion. And once someone sees a doctor with these symptoms, how 
Hodgkin lymphoma is diagnosed. Yeah, so again, people have a lot of anxiety. You know, sometimes you know, uh, uh, patients are very wary of going to doctors and getting these investigations done. Uh, so uh, when when you go to a doctor with these symptoms, the first thing the doctor is going to do is do a detailed physical examination. You know, head to toe examination, look at lymph nodes, how big, how many of them are there, what is the distribution, are they painful, are there other telltale signs of cancer. So a good physical examination is first thing, and then they're going to order a host of investigations, including initial blood. investigations uh, biochemical investigations however uh, the diagnosis itself is arrived at by two important things number one the imaging of the body to find out what is the distribution disease burden and which all the lymph node sites are involved second one is by actually uh, removing a part of lymph node or a whole lymph node called as lymph node excision biopsy which is then looked at under the microscope by pathologist who will look at the morphology initially and then they're going to do more advanced specific tests called as immunohistochemistry to subtype cancer so uh, the diagnosis by uh, histopathological examination of uh, the lymph node biopsy and what does the treatment journey looks like yeah so uh, you know again lot of anxieties so the the treatment of cancer itself has evolved uh, over last several decades i'm sure you are aware all of us have moved from uh, you know more uh, generic uh, non individualized chemotherapy based treatment which though were effective in, in certain number of patients would also have awful side effects so we all have moved to more targeted therapies however hodgkin's lymphoma is one of the cancers which even had very good cure rate even with conventional chemotherapy one of the chemotherapy protocols that we have used for hodgkin's lymphoma is a protocol called as abvd which is combination of chemotherapy agents when we have a newly diagnosed patient of hodgkin's lymphoma first we want to stage them whether they have local uh, localized disease or early disease whether they have advanced stage disease which is very important because patients who have localized disease without lot of disease burden can easily be treated with abbreviated course of therapy which often time can be conventional chemotherapy yet they can achieve a very high cure rate however if the patients have advanced stage disease have high disease burden have more systemic symptoms uh, we also have uh, the conventional chemotherapy but apart from that we have more nuanced more targeted therapy which can be used so we call those immunotherapeutic modalities so we can combine the newer agents with old school chemotherapy and improve the cure rate and yet reduce the toxicity and so we have moved uh, we have evolved in treating hodgkin's lymphoma patients and there is a saying that the journey of chemotherapy will be more painful is that true yeah no so there is some truth to it however not true in entirety you know we must try and uh, make sure that patients and families understand that conventional high dose toxic chemotherapy is something that we are using lesser and lesser in the cancer care we have moved to more targeted more individualized more uh, disease centric uh, therapy and these are not as awful as toxic as the conventional therapy were and yet they are likely to be much more effective than the conventional therapies and even in those few patients where we have to use conventional chemotherapy there are protocols you know which can reduce you know chemotherapy induced nausea vomiting uh, we can give medications to make sure that they are uh, having a good reasonable quality of life we also have to make sure that we look at their heart their kidney their lungs to make sure that they are not suffering the toxicity of the medicine so all of these are done in a systematic protocolized manner patients can go through the treatment much better today than they would be several years before and how much difference does the early detection really make extremely important you know it's something that i would request you and your colleagues to make sure that we as 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 caregivers as families as communities you know number one make sure that we do not consider cancer as a taboo there is no need to hide it's a illness that nobody has control over number two early detection is extremely important in fact all medicine practice says prevention is better than cure however yes. early detection is extremely important in cancer care somebody who has a less disease burden has localized disease the treatment is easier cure rate is very high as against somebody who has a high disease burden has more advanced form of disease so their their outcome is not perhaps as good not that it is very bad uh, today but yes it is extremely important to diagnose all lymphomas all cancers in the early stage okay so now we have one uh, interesting segment sure. to clean up the myths around this sure. hodgkin's lymphoma sure so i have few myths okay so myth number 1 only older people get hodgkin lymphoma not true actually so we used to say hodgkin's lymphoma has a bimodal presentation so young you know young people adolescents and young adults can develop hodgkin's lymphoma too in fact lymphoma as a group can affect any age mm. so it is not true that only elderly people develop hodgkin's lymphoma no okay and there is another myth swollen lymph nodes are always 
mean cancer no not true again uh, i'm glad you have come up with these myths we must you know bust these myths so not every enlarged lymph node is a cancer uh, for example tuberculosis is one of the commonest cause for enlarged lymph nodes in india so one must not presume that if there is a enlarged lymph node it is a cancer uh, at the end of the day the diagnosis by doing the lymph node biopsy and looking under the microscope okay so cancer treatment always leads to unbearable side effects not true again you know um, in fact most patients during the treatment continue to do their work at least work from home so not all cancer treatment is painful not all cancer treatment leads to irreversible toxicity no that's not true okay so if hodgkin lymphoma comes back there are no options left no again <laughs> again again not true you know uh, there was a time when we would worry about all relapsed lymphomas however if a, if a lymphoma or uh, for example hodgkin's lymphoma relapses we look at certain things you know what was the stage at initial diagnosis what was the duration of first remission uh, what was the uh, chemotherapy protocol or immunotherapy protocol that the patient received so number one we can treat even the relapsed hodgkin's lymphoma very well uh, the treatment and the success depends on what was the initial protocol used and what was the duration of remission we have much better much effective and much targeting uh, agents in terms of immunotherapy for hodgkin's lymphoma it could be uh, it could be brentuximab it could be nivolumab it could be uh, pembrolizumab there are various newer agents that one can use and we also have something called as autologous bone marrow transplantation so we use these salvage protocols to put the patient back in remission meaning to reduce those burden of the disease again and then do something called as autologous bone marrow transplantation which can cure almost half or 50 to 60 percent of those patients with relapsed lymphoma yeah okay i think you have cleared all the myths around this hodgkin's lymphoma now i hope it helps yeah let's move to the next segment sure this is living with and beyond hodgkin lymphoma yeah so the first question is how can patients and their families cope emotionally with the yeah. hodgkin lymphoma diagnosis yeah so like any other cancer diagnosis you know when when you break the news of a cancer people go through those emotions of of anger of denial and then you know making peace with it so we must make sure that we are support you as individuals as caregivers and as family remember no matter how much we empathize it is the person who's having the diagnosis who's suffering the most and who's feeling the lowest so we must be very mindful of that fact and also what should give us more courage and conviction is most of these patients are going to do well at the end of the day you know so the the, the success rates of hodgkin's lymphoma treatment are over the roof now most patients are likely to do well so can individuals uh return to normal life oh, after treatment oh absolutely uh, so you know once uh, once you complete your treatment and the disease is gone you are a normal person for all accounts of course that is the whole idea of treating people yeah super so we are coming to the end of this interview so we have <laughs> dr malik arjun karashetty with us and what is the one message you would like to give to the public yeah so i would say number 1 be careful about suspicious symptoms number 2 don't be in denial number 3 remember cancer care uh, more so hodgkin's lymphoma care has evolved and more patients are likely to do well and will be completely cured of the treatment treatment itself is neither painful nor will it have lasting toxicities thank you for having me and i would like to add one more thing don't just google your symptoms yes you know yeah <laughs> there is no filter on google right yeah. <laughs> so whatever pain you search for it will yeah. show cancer yes Ultimately. certainly yeah <laughs> so thank yeah. you so much thank doctor you. so thank today you. we came to know a lot about this hodgkin's lymphoma and myths around this uh, hodgkin's lymphoma and you have cleared everything And I hope so. I try. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.